Yeah, it's your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis. It is Monday, February 26, 2018. What's going on, people? I want to give a shout out first before we even get started. Song request of the day goes out to Ads D. He wanted me to play some Jason Derulo. I've heard this song before, don't know where. Uh, it sounds like a popular song. I've heard this one before. But I want to shout out to him. Thanks for the song request today. And what's going on, people? Hope your weekend was nice, relaxing. I, I chilled out, didn't do much yesterday. Watched the uh, Honda Classic battle. I think Thomas, Thomas won that one. Um, Tiger did. He's doing better. He's, he's looking better and better. I think he finished even par for the tournament. And, uh, yeah, I didn't do much, man. I, I went up to the cigar lounge, kicked it with the fellas, watched a little golf. That's about it. Today's article is going to be a little bit controversial, probably. But it's, off, it's, it's, it's based on not opinion, but actual research. <clears throat> so... Hope you guys find this uh, informative and uh, get your wheels turning a little bit. I'll leave the link to the actual research paper in the description of this video, uh, but we'll get into the details of that. Let's go ahead and first look at the uh, market cap because we've bounced off the lows and uh, market cap is currently at $449 billion. Bitcoin's dominance, 38.5%. Again, we, we bounced off the lows. In general, you can see where we got a green day in the markets for the top 100. But what I want to look at, what I love to do, guys, is that technical analysis. So, look what happened. I said, our, our last saving grace is... 9,200 area, 9,000, it just, it just depends. We bounce right off of that. This is a very bullish move upwards. This is on the one hour candle. Um, so this, this is very bullish here. Now again, I've told you guys, we have to see a close above this dotted line. Um, you know, be even before that we do need to see a close again above the two uh, 10,200 area which has been a, a critical area for me so if we can get above the 2,200 range on Bitcoin from the Bitstamp exchange our next goal is to get back above this dotted uh, trend line here so it ranges anywhere from 10,500 you know all the way out the slope goes up we can just say 10,700 so that range is where we need to get above people I'm hoping we can do that in the next couple of days here honestly 1388 let's just say cliff is off we got an error range of T T minus T plus two three days Hey, I mean, I can see in five days us going from here. Where are we at? 10,200 area? Yeah. We, so I can see us getting, I mean, 30, what's that, 36% to get that back to 13,800. So I can see 36%. Uh, moving in Bitcoin to the upside in, in five five to seven days so let's see what happens it's not impossible definitely not impossible since we had that bounce off the lows that was a very big uh, bounce off the lows in my opinion so may have been our saving grace there people um, but the article today we're gonna go over is out of Bitcoin.com 
but it's actually a, a research paper done by a group out of Cornell University. The group, I think, name is IC3, and that stands for an uh, Initiative for Cryptocurrencies and Contracts. So it says here, Cornell University's, uh, University researchers using the Falcon Relay Network have concluded that neither of the two most popular cryptocurrency blockchains, Bitcoin and Ethereum, are as decentralized as one once thought. A two-year longitudinal study claims Bitcoin underutilizes its network. Ethereum is better distributed than Bitcoin and Bitcoin's rewards for smaller miners is often unpredictable due to block size limits. It says here, Cornell University researchers release blockchain study. Decentralization in blockchain or Bitcoin and Ethereum networks a peer-reviewed study from the Initiative for Cryptocurrencies and Contracts at Cornell University led by Emin Sirer, which is the, he's the co-founder of IC3, is bound to make some waves. Originally scheduled to be presented in February this month at the Financial Crypto and Data Security Conference, the paper was released online and made available to the public. Uh, just about 10 days ago. The paper measures the actual practice of decentralization rather than hype to that effect surrounding two of the largest market cap cryptocurrency networks, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Researchers examine nodes and their interconnection protocol requirements and, have, and how they stand up to attacks using the Falcon Relay Network to gather data so there's a um, I'm going to show you this uh, image here and as you can see there I've got the, the image graphed here up uh, and it says that RFN disseminates blocks connecting miners full nodes and ferries blocks by reducing orphans in turn the network overall is more efficient and can concentrate on security with the ultimate goal of helping Bitcoin scale by effectively decoupling disseminating block speed from network size. The hope is doing so will level the playing field among miners and increase decentralization. Along with the colleagues, uh, the, the paper studies years 2015 through 2017, building on their earlier 2016 position paper. It appears bandwidth for Bitcoin nodes has increased by 1.7 times since 2016. With more allocation of bandwidth and research claim, block sizes can increase without impacting decentralization. You, do you guys hear that? I said block size can increase without impacting decentralization. And with an increase per second cleared, Transactions for Bitcoin should be able to nearly double a major bone of contention for users. So this graph here kind of shows uh, their tests uh, among different levels of bandwidth on different protocols as well. So um, they tested Ethereum on IPv4, which is what we primarily use uh, with, within the internet now um, but it also tested Bitcoin on IP uh, version 6 and on the Tor networks so this is a little bit more technical but uh, again what I wanted to highlight is that basically one one key point is that Cornell University has proven that doubling the block size will not compromise uh, security Security. It says it won't compromise uh, decentralization, but that kind of translates into uh, security as well. So I think that's been a big um, point that a lot of Bitcoin Core supporters have been holding on to. And this independent study from Cornell University kind of states otherwise. Um, what do you guys think about this? 
this whole situation. Like, um, I personally think this is this is groundbreaking. And like, this came out about a, about ten days ago, but I had it pinned, and I still, you know, I wanted to definitely cover this and have this as a topic of discussion on the channel because. Like I said, man, we, we can't go off emotions. I'm not saying Roger Ver and his team are, or I should just say Roger Ver, are approaching things the right way. But at the same time, there, there are being studies done that are showing that first cryptocurrencies aren't as decentralized as we first thought. And secondly, uh, Bitcoin can double its block size without compromising security slash decentralization. So I would love to get your thoughts. I know Charlie Lee talked about this on Twitter. He had a conversation, kind of a little spat going back and forth between um, Buterin, which is the uh, co-founder of Ethereum, and Charlie Lee. They were going back and forth, and Charlie Lee was like, hey, even, even Litecoin is not as decentralized as you know many people think neither is ethereum is what he was saying and you know his whole his whole thing was is it like he believes there needs to be some aspect some level of decentralization on a um in in, a, in, a, in a, like a blockchain on a triple ledger type of system there needs to be some level some percentage of descent of centralization i should say in order to move things forward in a uh, efficient manner. So, like I said, what do you guys think? Can we, are we ever gonna have a point where we can have a fully decentralized blockchain protocol and still progress and make changes and make progress and move in one direction? Because there does need to be some path some kind of like consensus where we're all moving in the same direction maybe that can be done through voting though you know without it still being uh having to have like a core team that's dictating what's going on and not voting by the miners because right now that's kind of what dictates which way we're going with things uh, as far as the bitcoin protocol so i would love to know what you guys think about that uh, topic um, one last thing I do want to show you guys I did an, uh, I did an article a video on SegWit adoption and I told you that Coinbase has started to push online SegWit wallets just a few days ago we were at around 14% and uh, now, looks like we've gotten up to 16%. So we're, we're slowly moving up as far as adoption of SegWit uh, across the network. Where do you guys think ultimately SegWit percentage as far as adoption on the network? Where do you think it will be? Again, I want to reiterate and ask that question. Where do you think it will be? Uh, when Coinbase fully and GDAX fully gets everything rolled out to 100% of their users. I'm going to say my personal guess is 25, 24%. That's where I think we'll, we'll end up once Coinbase fully implements SegWit. 25 Let's just say 25 to 30, 30, 30%. I'm going to go with that. Give me a 5% range there, people. Let me know your thoughts. Where do you think SegWit um, activation will be once Coinbase gets done? That's pretty much it, people, for today. Make sure you like and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, click that bell, people. That's very uh, important if you want to see or get an alert for any of my new videos. That's it, people. Get over to CryptoBlood.io and get you some merch. I'll let your boy. I'm out.